Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today we're going to make a maxi skirt. You want to start by folding your skirt directly in half. I'm using the straight edge of my yardstick to help me get a nice clean fold. Using a washable marker, mark out your pattern. Now ignore this pink line. You're gonna follow the blue line for this one. I started too high up on the skirt. Being that this is a maxi skirt, the top folds down, so I wanted to make sure to accommodate for that. And then just pleat along this line. I edited a lot out because I think I have my camera turned upside down because all you see for a lot of it is the back of my head and well nobody wants to see that so sorry about that guys for this project i decided to use kite string to secure it i have better control over the tension if you don't have kite string you certainly could use rubber bands Continue to work on your pleats as you secure it with the kite string, working your way down to the tip. Now this material is a rayon jersey and it's stretchy and it's sort of thick. It's different than a t-shirt. Um, it takes the dye re really nicely though. So at this point my back is killing me so I'm down on my knees in front of the table working on this. It took me a long time. Uh, this is a special project for my aunt, and so it's really special to me, so I wanted to make sure to do it right. Please excuse the wild frizzy ponytail I've got going on. We're having a real heat streak here in Portland and so my hair is up and it's wild. I think I was out working in the garden before I came in to tie up this skirt. So you just want to continue to tie it up and then work your string all the way back to the beginning and just secure it with a simple double knot. Using a washable marker, mark out your pattern. This is not a necessary step, but it's something that I like to do because it helps me stay focused. Ignore these marks on the back. I was going to do all kinds of wild things like an offset and all of that and then it's on a timeline. It needs to make it to Dave Matthews, right? So I had to just abandon ship and go with what I know for sure is going to work and that's just a basic rainbow. So I walked away from the project, went and took a shower, cooled down and thought about it and so this is what I settled on. Sometimes you just have to walk away and think about it for a while and then you come back and the item speaks to you and then you can just get on with the project. Does that ever happen to you guys? Now it's time for the fun part. We get to add the dies. I love playing with the die. This is really the best part of the whole project. So I like to start with my light colors first especially when I'm using yellow. Yellow seems to always disappear in my projects. It gets swallowed up by everything around it. Does that happen to you guys? It probably does. So another reason why I also like to start by using my light colors first, I feel like they have a chance to go in and start to react with the fibers and set in before the dark colors swallow it up.
Periodically, I feel like I need to say this. It looks like I'm adding my dye very erratically. I'm really not. I have this sped up for the sake of time, um, but I'm actually adding my dye very slowly and methodically. Raven Black has a tendency to always clog my tip. If any of you have watched previous videos, you've really seen me struggle with this. So once I know that it's going to come out nice, I start creeping up towards my fuchsia red. You know, dye creeps. So I'm holding back just a little bit, allowing it to fill in while I'm, you know, covering up the rest of it. If I go right up against that fuchsia red right out of the gate, it's gonna end up swallowing too much into the fuchsia. So that's just something to keep in mind. Look at all that turquoise. Turquoise is one of those colors that just really can be very easily oversaturated. I just recently, a couple weeks ago, made a shirt and I was doing like this cool offset pattern thing. The shirt basically ended up completely turquoise because as it was batching, it just swallowed up all the white. So when working with turquoise, you don't have to be heavy handed. And while we're on the topic of dyes that are somewhat aggressive, deep orange is another color that you can use it pretty sparingly, especially in ice dyes. It really will overtake everything. And I've also noticed with Bluebird, Bluebird is extremely powerful. A little bit goes a long way. Right before our very eyes, we're watching that yellow slowly disappear. I don't want any white left in this project, so I'm making sure to go pretty heavy with the Raven Black. All those dark spots in the orange look pretty scary. Just remember, that's the washable marker. This project is going to have a black back, so you want to let your rainbow colors rest. That way they have a chance to react with the fibers and set in. 
So this ended up sitting for about 20 minutes. When adding the black back, you want to work quickly because you do not want to oversaturate. And without fail, Raven Black has shown up to clog my tip. I'm just using my hand to sort of work some of the dye in, make it even. There were some puddles and I didn't want to leave puddles. So you can dive in there with your hands, get yourself dirty, have fun with it. Once you get your black back on, flip it back over so your colors are up on the top. And then you're gonna let it batch for 24 to 48 hours. This project batched for 48 hours because I did not want any white whatsoever and I wanted a very vibrant rainbow. Obviously, the longer the dye sits, the brighter and darker the colors could possibly be. But anything after 48 hours is not necessary and that comes directly from Dharma. Now it's time for the rinse out. You wanna start by using cold water to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fibers and gradually increase the water up to hot and rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. From here, I take it to the washing machine and I do a hot water cycle. I do a second hot water cycle using Synthropol. That's a textile detergent that I get from Dharma. And it's recently been discontinued or discontinued again. So they have a new product called Kirilon, and I do have it listed down below in the description box. I'm going to be switching into that here pretty soon, but, but we'll talk about that when I get there. But if you're trying to buy it, it's called Kirilon. And then I do a third hot water cycle using Milsoft, and that brings softness back into the fabric after the dyeing process. I put it in the dryer, and we come back and we see our results. Well, here it is guys. Here's our skirt after it's been washed and dried. And I think it turned out really pretty. I think once it's on the body, it's going to look totally different. I need to find a better way to photograph these, but for now, this is what we've got. So right out of the gate, I notice one side has darker, more pronounced black lines than the other. So next time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my hand technique and I'm going to black back both sides so they have a more uniform look to them. But like I said, once it's on the body, I don't think it's going to be an issue at all. So what do you guys think of this skirt? Please leave me some comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already, leave a thumbs up and click the bell for future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing.